In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Christ is risen. Christos was crazy. Christos anesti. Today we are giving two accounts of people coming to belief and salvation in Jesus Christ. In the epistle for this Sunday, uh, we hear of Paul's um, being imprisoned uh, after he is brought to anger and he's lost his patience with this uh, woman that's divinizing uh, and uh, calling out to him and kind of nagging at him and he, he frees her from this uh, demon and then he's put to jail for this. The owner of this slave woman is, puts him in jail. And then we hear of a, this jail holder um, who after this miracle of this earthquake and the shackles falling off of Paul and Silas, um, he's afraid for his life, he's going to kill himself. And then Paul speaks out to him and tells him not to harm himself, not to have fear. And in that moment, he has this encounter with Paul that is an encounter with Christ. And he wants to know how he's to be saved, how he can believe. And, he, and Paul says that you need to believe in Christ and then be baptized. And they did. His whole house, by the way. It says his whole house. Not just him, his whole house. And this means his whole family. Baptized and believe in the Lord. That would mean children, adults, everybody in the household, multi-generational household. These weren't like these nuclear families we think today where it's just mom, dad, and the kids. Everybody, his whole house. And so we hear about this encounter. And so oftentimes when people think, how are we saved? How do we come and to believe our salvation? Uh, it's, it's very similar to what this account was. People say, you believe in Jesus Christ, be baptized, and you're saved. Very simple formula, it would seem. But we hear today's uh, gospel from St. John the Theologian, who, by the way, we celebrate today. Uh, it's his spring feast uh, on the honor of, of his, being, his burial and the, the miracles that happened at his grave. And so we hear this gospel, and it kind of turns things around a little bit if we look at it in a more spiritual uh, way. He meets this man, he sees this man who is blind, and he's been blind uh, from the day he was born. And the apostles uh, get into a conversation with them. Who sinned, this man or his parents, for him to be this way? You have to understand the Jews, of course, have an understanding of being in good grace with God, meaning following the law. If you don't follow the law, you've sinned, and bad things will happen to you. We can only look at the book of Job and his friends who did, told him essentially the same thing. But also there's this, also this understanding of this Epicurean Greek philosophy that was prevalent at the time with the pre-existence of souls and maybe you were a bad soul and so you sinned before you were even born and this is your lot, right? You're born. And Christ says this is ridiculous. He didn't sin, neither did his parents. But for the glory of God to be manifest in him today. And so Christ takes this dirt, which we are all formed from, he spits in it, he makes clay, and he puts it on the man's eyes and he tells him that to go to Pulisiloam and wash. And so he does. The man goes. He washes and he receives his sight. And from there we, we see this big dialogue. And it's quite the literary, a literary uh, dialogue. It's, it could be a novel, a wonderful novel that John puts this. Going back and forth from the authorities to Christ and to his parents and questioning and these interrogations. Um, this is again going back to this understanding of the power of God and people not accepting it at the time of Christ or, or uh, who he really was. Uh, but the, the greater part is this idea that God sent, Christ sent this man. He, he encountered God. He hasn't fully understood who Christ was, but he's had this experience of Christ. Christ puts this bandage on him, so to speak, and heals him like he does all of humanity. But he gives them a prescription and says, go. He sends them. That's what Siloam means. It means to be sent. He sends them to do something. This encounter with Christ meant nothing unless he went and followed the prescription that Christ gave him. Go wash in Siloam. Go wash. He received his sight. Because he went, he had action. And then later on, after these interrogations, Christ takes pity on him because he's been exiled from the community from the synagogue for nothing but being receiving the healing. He's exiled and he says, do you believe in the Son of God? Who is he? It's me. And he believes. 
The belief came after the fact. Belief came after the healing. The belief came after the action. It wasn't just believe, be baptized, and you're saved. His salvation was because he put in the effort, brothers and sisters. And so we too are saved. Yes, our baptism washes away from sin, and, and in a way it heals us from that, that, that uh, inheritance of, of ancestral sin that we've got from the beginning of times from the forefather Adam and Eve. Our baptisms heal us from this. But at the same time, Christ is saying, I've applied the balm. Now go and wash yourself. First in the baptism waters, and then continually in the pools of tears of repentance. And you see, brothers and sisters, we have to continually be purifying ourselves. We have to always see our conscience and the way we live our lives in this world, even until our last breath. It doesn't matter that we're members of the one holy Catholic apostolic church. It means nothing in the end if we abandoned it, if we defile our garments, our robes of baptism which Christ has given us. We defile that and we become lukewarm, become, uh, in a sense, some forms of apostasy, really. There's many different forms of apostasy. It's not outright denial of Christ. It's the way we live our lives is the denial of Christ, right? We can proclaim it with our mouths. We can say we are believers, but if we don't live it, we're still apostates. That's what we are. And so, let us be sent to the pools of Siloam, brothers and sisters, continually, so that we may proclaim, I believe in the Son of God, because we've been healed, because we've been purified, because we did the work, we did the action, and we worked together with our Savior in the healing of our souls. Christ is risen.